sun, there it is. Well, good morning. The sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. It's a good day to do some videoing, and it's a great day to be a pond man. So, it's been a long time since I've done any sort of videoing. The last time I did was the winter pond video, hints and tips. So it's quite nice to get outside now, in a change of weather, a new season, and start doing some warm videoing. Got guest appearances with Dave again. Good morning, Dave. Good morning. <laughs> and what's today's job? Uh, a pond drain. He doesn't know. Today we're going to be a liner. sticking this behemoth of a pond liner, about 95 kilos <laughs> of pond liner, and lining an excavation. Now, I would just like to take this opportunity to thank all of my recent subscribers and viewers. I'm so close to that 10,000 subscriber mark now, uh, which I never thought initially that I'd get to. So really, really appreciative. Thank you so much to all of you guys uh, for subscribing and continuing to watch this content. I know that I only release stuff quite sporadically and certainly through the winter period. There's not really an awful lot of pond work that's getting uh, going on. So I don't have much of an opportunity to get the camera out. But from now, right through the rest of the season, I've got lots of exciting projects lined up lots of ponds revisited that I want to go back to to see how they're establishing uh, so hopefully a lot of excuse to get the camera out and to continue building up on the channel and releasing content um, to mark the 10,000 subscriber count I wanted to start producing just a little bit of merchandise just for a bit of fun I don't really have my own kind of brand or, or work wear that I wear most of the time just living in a vest for the summer months so I've always wanted to have a t-shirt with my own kind of brand or logo. Uh, and I've been working in conjunction with an old school friend of mine, Tom Hardwich, who is a fantastic creative artist and has his own business, uh, building and designing computer games and other creative things. And again, I'll put a link to him in the description below. But I got in contact with him a little while ago and said that I had some ideas just for some aquatic themed characters. And I doodled a little rubbish sketch. Art is definitely not my forte. Uh, and he came back to me with three or four wonderful, fantastic uh, images, which I've been able to use on some t-shirts and clothing. So as I hit that 10,000 subscriber mark, you may notice on the channel that there's gonna be a little merchandise shop uh, button where if you want to, you can purchase clothing and mugs and hats and other various bits and pieces based on the images. This is one of them, if you can see it. This is my uh, mirror carp on the back. There's going to be leather carp, crucian carp, and common carp currently. But check him out, he's a fantastic designer and artist, and he's done some really, really good, interesting pictures. And the logo itself is going to be branded Carpe Diem. Carpe Diem, Latin for seize the day, seize the moment, uh, and a little play on the word of carp. So the sea is going to be made out of a fish. All interesting stuff. Good morning, Dave. Good morning, Ed. How are you doing? <laughs> right, so first task, we've got to move this very large pond liner and get it over to the excavation. So this is a heavy duty, one mil thick Firestone rubber liner supplied by the wonderful people at Gordon Lowe. Uh, and this is about 95 kilos in weight, so it's quite a hefty piece. And then we're using a nice heavy duty 250 GSM pond fleece to go underneath that. So we've got a bit of a trek. Go and take it over to where the pond is. Lovely area, and then we'll go and show you what we're doing. So this has been very expertly uh, installed, very nicely engineered, block work, concrete, and then capped off with some bricks. And ultimately this area is going to be finished off with, I think, some nice um, rustic Yorkstone paving. Uh, this has just filled up over the winter months and of course needs to get emptied out before we can do any work in the, in the pond. But this is going to be useful to hang on to because we need some water to be able to get the pond liner to then sit back into the excavation. So we've set up one of our big holding tanks. We're currently emptying out this pond so we can reserve this water. All of this excavation, all of this shell is going to need to get cleaned up. There's lots of debris and bits of grit and stones that are going to have to come out. There's no doubt going to be a certain amount of mortar and slop that's gone in the bottom that's going to have to be cleaned out. Uh, I believe it's a solid concrete base, a poured slab at the base as well, so there shouldn't be too much prep work before we get the fleece and the pond liner in. Uh, and then we can use this water, as I say, to pump back in and get that pond liner held in place. The general kind of template and theme of this pond is very similar to uh, the template that I use for most ponds, in that the pond liner from the marginal zone upwards is going to be concealed with stonework. There's going to be a retaining stone collar built here to hold back the gravel. And then there's going to be natural stonework built inside here, which is going to conceal that inner face of pond liner. 
This section of the pond is going to have a raised feature wall with a water blade, again very reminiscent to the uh, last formal pond that I built last season. And again we've got some nice formal marginal zones, some shelving all the way around the pond which is going to look fantastic for some planting. Even at these very early stages of designing ponds, uh, there's a few very important features and aspects of ponds that you're going to want to consider right from the beginning. And one of the very important ones to do so is an overflow, is to make sure that you can regulate what's going in the pond and what's going out. Now, not every pond installation has an area where you can suitably uh, overflow the water and so often then you might have the pond surrounded by borders or you might have a boggy area that allows that water to, to overflow and naturally soak away into. Here, thankfully, uh, there's a nice four inch drain that's been put into position already disappearing off to a gully. Uh, so in this stage of the pond, we'll have a through union connector through the pond liner with the usual sort of articulated joint that I can then rotate and increase in height if I want to to regulate and govern the depth of the pond. Um, and when they were doing the block work, they've left nicely a little opening here so that the pipe work can disappear off through. So that was a good bit of foresight. Right, I better do some work because Dave's been doing it all. That's pretty normal. Yeah. Thanks, filling up nicely. Welcome back. <laughs> So nearly empty, you can see there's a lot of muck in the bottom that's just going to have to come out. And look, just goes to show how much water we've had this winter. As we're emptying, water is actually going back in through the block work. So there's a lot of groundwater that needs to drain from here over the next few weeks and months. Well at least this tank's set up at a nice level surface and there's no risk of this one collapsing on me. Well, I'm nearly at wader stage. I'm not looking forward to sticking those on in this seat, I can tell you. But it's got to be done. That's it. Vesta's gone on, if the waders are going on, at least I want to be comfortable up high. But it's warm enough to whack on a little bit of Factor 50. Hello summer, welcome to the UK. This is about the most work I've done all year. Still, this is a little bit of a warm up for my first construction job that I'll be starting in a couple of weeks. Right, that's the pond emptied and all the slurry and the muck removed. And now we've got some final prep work to do before we can start thinking about putting the fleece and the pond liner in. Um, just going around with a shovel or a straight edge, just running it down the inner edge of the block work just to make sure if there's any protruding bits of um, mortar and any sort of rough edges that they're taken off before the liner goes up against it. And likewise, just on this corner of the block work around the shelving edge. I'll just run the shovel over that just to smooth that down slightly. Now the pond is empty, most of the water that was leaking out through the, the block work has stopped flowing out so that's a really good encouraging sign. Right, job done, pond emptied. That's all the prep work done and we are ready to get the fleece in and the pond liner. But before we do that, it's lunchtime. Bite to eat, eh? Yep. Well, there's worse spots to have your lunch. What's in my box today? Chicken and rice, a staple of mine. Right, where's the tape measure? There it is. Right, before we start putting the fleece and pond liner in, I just want to run my tape measure and measure the proportions of the pond just to make sure the details that were given to me were accurate. 
Last thing I want to do is to open up the pond liner and find that it's not big enough. So all I'm doing is using a flexible measure like this. Those of you that have watched my videos will be very familiar with this. But this is a very quick and easy way, and most importantly an accurate way, to just gauge how much lining you need. Stick your foot on there for me, thank you. Okay, I just need something to weigh that down. You wanna grab me a rock, please? Cameraman's gonna go and get me a rock. Wonderful, thank you, David. <sighs> Okay, so we have got woo, eight meters 34, and I've got an eight and a half, so that's perfect. And then we can do the same on the width. And we'll have a look and see where we're at. So this is a dedicated pond fleece, a geotextile woven fabric which is needle punctured to make sure that it's water permeable, it's very rock proof, and it's gonna last the length of the pond line or longer, and it's gonna protect the main pond line of the membrane from little bits of grit and sharp obtrusions that might potentially uh, compromise the pond lining, and it's gonna protect it from roots and other things. Now in this particular excavation, because we've got a concrete pad and solid walls, there's no give whatsoever. So if there was a, a very sharp stone, a bit of flint, a bit of grit or something caught between the ground and the pond liner, that would be disastrous for the main lining. So even more important to make sure that you use a good thick layer of this. And I always like to use the heavy duty and I always like to double up and give it two layers. My sharp scissors are not quite as sharp as they used to be. Yep. I'll treat myself to another pair. I've had these for a long time. Yeah, thank you. Don't know if you heard that, viewers, but he said I'll make a good seamstress. Right, pond fleece in. Time for the pond liner. That is hot. Right, pond liner in. We've just opened it out so that the bottom, deep part of the pond is kind of crease-free and then all around the edges here, we've just pulled it slightly taut. There's a bit of tension on it, so it's not quite touching the edges. And the idea is here that we'll now use the water, the weight of the water to fill this up and to use that weight to pull the liner down and to fill this void nice and neatly. We tried to make sure when we were fitting the liner that the folds and the creases of the liner are kind of nice and square in line with each other. As a rectangular pond, a formal pond like this, it's quite useful to be able to use those straight lines as a kind of guide when you're fitting the liner. So, we'll get a bit of water in here and then stop filling and I'll start manipulating the edges of the lining to form the neat corner creases. Go for it, Dave. I'll tell you, it's flipping hot in these. If it was nice and clean water, I'd, I'd get in there with my shorts on, I think. Yeah. Well, it's gonna take a lot longer to fill up than it did to empty, because we're, we're fighting gravity with the tank being a bit down there. So this bit's gonna take a little while. Now, it's always worth noting, if you're walking on top of your pond liner, always check the cleats and the grips of your footwear just to make sure you've not picked up any bits of grit and stones, which might damage the lining. Oh, barbecue weather this is. Uh. I don't know which pool I'd rather be in. Now, some of you may be wondering, why am I returning dirty water back into the pond? And that's because this pond is going to be emptied at least once more, probably twice, before it's filled finally with its final fill and then the filtration system turned on and everything allowed to rest. 
and the stonework is built in here, there's going to be a lot of cement and muck that goes into it. Once that's finished, that needs to sit in water and settle, so a lot of that lime content from the mortar can leach out into the water. So the fact that this was filled up with rainwater and it was dirty didn't matter. It was just useful to hang on to this so I could get this back into the pond and just use it purely as a weight to get that pond liner down. And it's a substantial volume of water. Trouble is, there's a lot of twiddling my thumbs now. Can't do anything until the pond is filled up. And that's just a waiting game. So being in a square or rectangular shape means that all the creases can be gathered together so you end up with one neat fold in each corner. Obviously from here upwards, none of this is going to be visible. That's underneath stonework and gravel and plants. And all this stuff down here very quickly is going to grow kind of a natural patina of, of algae. Underwater, it's going to disguise those creases. And as this pond fills up, the extreme weight of that water is really going to push up against these and help to disguise them further. Nice and neat. Not sure what's happening, but a man with a digger has just turned up behind me and started digging. It's quite interesting. Just been having a nice chat with him. One day it'd be quite nice to get something like that to dig out the ponds for me. So just here at the back of the pond, that's where the raised feature wall was going to go. It's going to be a stainless steel water blade pouring into the pond. A nice LED strip light inside it, uplit. I mean, this is really a blueprint of a pond that I installed last year and the customers had watched the video. They had a company on board that were already doing landscaping and work in the garden, so they just wanted my input for the designs. So this will be a very similar pond to one I put in last year. All right, the pond's nearly full. And I have just been spending a few minutes fitting one of my overflows in the corner here. So there's a, a waste pipe here that's been left in position so that I can put a through liner connector, one of the Oaza Tradux connectors, the usual 90 degree elbow, which can be articulated and can be extended with a bit of pipe if I need to so that I can make the pond deeper. And then that disappears off over here. So that's the overflow done. Right, I better give Dave a hand with this. That's it for now, essentially. I'll be back on site numerous occasions to come and sort out and advise on the water blade, the lighting, the filtration. So I'll come back and I'll video and document the progress with this pond and ultimately the whole surrounding area, the pool and the rest of the garden. So it's going to be a lovely job to see when it's finished. And obviously all the planting, once that's done, is really going to let it establish and make it into a wonderful feature. But that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed from Crystal Clear Aquatics. And I'm Dave. <laughs> and I'll see you in the next pond. Thanks very much for watching. That's it for now, for the time being. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Ed, and he's Dave. Oh, you can say that. I'm Dave. Hang on, not yet. We have to say it nice and loud in there because you haven't got a microphone, okay?